Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about these Mercury Box uh, planetary gearbox and motor combos that come from Robot Matters. They sent me a couple of these and I'm just going to kind of compare and contrast them with the current gearbox motor combos that I use and just kind of, you know, show you some specs and tell you a little bit more about these. So let's get into it. So first off, let's talk about what I have in front of me and get some of the fun sponsorship stuff out of the way. These came to me free of charge from Robot Matters. There was no expectation about making a video, no expectation about a positive review or anything like that. I'm not reviewing these, I'm simply just having these in my hand and showing you what they are. The concept of this video is 100% my own with no outside influence. That being said, um, I've got two different types. I've got a 27 to one with a four millimeter shaft, and then I have a pair of these 19 to one with this big chonky six millimeter shaft. So I think first things first, let's just get some basic stats on these and then kind of go from there. These gear boxes are primarily being used for beetle weights. Um, they are kind of in the size and the weight class for a beetle. Um, I think these would be way, way, way too large and heavy for an ant weight, so just keep that in mind. They come in a lot of different configurations, and I'm not going to go over all the different configurations. I'm just going to kind of talk about the two that I have. But basically, you can get several different ratios in the gearboxes and several different sizes of the gearboxes. You have a couple different options for the output shafts, and then you have a couple different options for the motors as well. As you can see, I have a 27 to 1, and then I also have a 19 to 1 with a 4 millimeter and 6 millimeter. And these also do have different motors on them. For the 27 to 1, I have a 2300 kV motor, and then on the 19, this is a uh, 1400 kV motor. And both of these are about the same speed, roughly. Um, if we're assuming 4S, so 16 volts, we're about 1180 um, on this one, so about 1200 RPM on this guy, and about 1360 RPM on this one. The reason I mention this is, you know, just so you kind of get an idea, I think a good general rule of thumb for pretty much every bot is about 1,000 RPM. If you're just kind of in a planning stage, plan on about 1,000 RPM at the end of the shaft. Obviously, the size of the wheel is going to dictate how far you go with one revolution, but generally speaking, as the bot gets larger, 1,000 RPM will get you where you want to go. So that's just kind of a general rule of thumb. So let's talk about size and weight. Both of these are a 22 millimeter gearbox, which is pretty much the same thing that everyone else is using. These look a lot smaller, at least to me, I'm not sure how it shows up on camera, but this is also a 22 millimeter diameter gearbox. So these are actually about the same size with roughly the same size output shaft. The big difference is this is much longer. And if anyone doesn't watch my channel and aren't terribly familiar with what this is, this is the combo that I use in most all of my beetle weights. This is a, um, what is it, Eternity SK32118. 3100 kV motor paired with a Servo City 22 millimeter gearbox. The reason mine is square is because I am special. No, um, I just cut this down into a square for easier mounting and also weight saving. So this is just a standard 22 millimeter Servo City gearbox, which is you know knocked off in a lot of different um, variants. So that's what it looks like, you know, size wise. I think it's about 10 millimeters shorter. You can get the full dimensions on their website, but everything else is generally going to be about the same. If you have a setup for a 22 millimeter gearbox, these are going to be pretty much plug and play. The biggest difference is weight. Um, these are definitely a little bit heavier. So let me get my scale going here. Okay, that is zero. So my gearbox setup, um, being that it's lightened, we're at, what is that, 56? Yeah, 56 grams. So mine weighs in at 56, this four millimeter size weighs in at 68, so a little bit heavier. And then this one with the six millimeter shaft is a little bit over 70 grams. So you're definitely going to be spending a little bit more weight with these um, if that is a consideration. And they're also um, a fair amount larger, about 10 millimeters larger, but typically a lot of people have that extra room inside the robot. Most people aren't using this much space, so. 
So let's first talk about the motors and then I'll talk about the gearboxes separately. So mine uses an AeroDrive SK32118, which is good for about 50 watts of output power. This is using a Robot Matter branded motor, which is actually a rebranded DYS BE1806, which is good for about 90 watts of power. So this is a much more powerful motor, and you're looking at a difference between 16 grams worth of a motor versus 24. So it's about 50% heavier and produces almost 50% more power. Now in the beetle weight class, a motor like this is going to be perfectly adequate. You're going to have no problem pushing people and doing all that stuff. The thing that you have to look at is how much torque can this produce and then how much traction do you have. I have a whole couple of videos on this. I'll link to those down below. But this is the motor that I use and two of these with the right amount of traction and weight distribution is enough to support about three pounds worth of additional magnet down for. So, Theoretically, two of these can support a six pound rolling chassis without issue, and you can still slip the wheels on that. However, something like this with the um, extra power, you could go beyond that three pound magnet, or if these two are going head to head, one's pushing against the other one, this one's probably gonna win out with torque. So something to keep in mind. If you have a bot, um, you know, like I've got psychotic brake right here. This is not a pushing type of bot. That's just not how it's designed. Something like this is going to be perfectly adequate. But if you have some bot that is more of a wedge or, you know, any of those types of bots um, and you need that extra pushing power and you're going to have a ton of magnets, you might want the extra power that this is going to provide for you. So now it's time to talk about the actual gearboxes. You can see here in this view, just the size. Let me do it like that. You can see the size of the gearboxes, the same shaft, same shaft length, that gearbox versus that gearbox. This one is a lot larger and that's where some of the extra weight comes from. The biggest selling point of the Mercury box is the much larger gears inside. So I'm gonna take this apart and I have some spare parts for this guy and I'll show you the difference between the planetary gearboxes inside both of these. So here I've got both gearboxes opened up and you can see a pretty drastic difference between the size of the gears inside this planetary gearbox versus the ones inside the Servo City. You know, so there we go, that's that and that's that. Um, these are much, much smaller gears. These things are really tiny. I mean, they can just kind of get stuck on your finger um, and these are much, much larger. Now. Am I gonna make a case that these are gonna make a difference? Uh, that's, that's up to you, that's up to your bot, that's up to your design. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with a drivetrain and a lot of things that can go wrong with a gearbox. However, bigger is generally better. Um, the biggest difference between these is once again, this is a 22 millimeter diameter, and so is this. But if you look at the size between these outer ring gears, this one is substantially thicker than this one. It just kind of comes down to the design. This is a very thin wall and this is very thick. So they can make it up in the gearbox by just having much larger gears inside the planetary. And I think what these are called the planets, planet gears, something like that. Um, so just something to consider. This one has a lot bigger gears inside. Now, the reason that you would want this is let's say you do have a bot that, you know, is a push bot, is a control bot. If you have exposed wheels you're gonna want that extra little beef in the drivetrain. For me, I always protect my wheels and always make sure that the whole drivetrain is kind of inside the bot, so I don't worry about it as much, but these much larger gears are really nice to have. Look at these things. Look at the size comparison between these two. That is a pretty substantial difference. Another thing to consider with gearboxes is the bearing on the output shaft. So this is kind of the outer piece, right? We have um, this mounting flange, and then we have the planetary gearbox stuff on the inside. And then we have this bearing right here that holds the shaft in place. And both of these have pretty much the same configuration. You have a shaft that goes through into a bearing with this little C-clip on there. But if we look at the difference in size between this bearing and that bearing, it's pretty substantial. I think this one probably has yeah, about a 13 millimeter bearing, and this one has only about an eight millimeter outer diameter bearing. So the bearing on the output shaft on the Mercury box is substantially larger, and it's also a lot smoother too. Um, it's just a really nice smooth, and there's 
almost no play whatsoever. And on the Servo City one, there's a little bit of play and it's um, not nearly as smooth. So that's something else to keep in mind. I think for our purposes and what we're doing in combat, running three minutes at a time, and if there's any damage, these things are just gonna be obliterated and you gotta replace them anyway. It's probably not as big of a deal, but something worth noting that this definitely has a much larger bearing on the output shaft. One more little thing that I noticed is in these pieces, I could have looked this up, but whatever these pieces are called, um, this one's from the Mercury Gearbox um, versus the Servo City one over here. You can see one main difference is this appears to be a solid cast piece as all one piece. Um, maybe that middle section is pressed in place, but if we look at the Mercury box, you can see the pins that actually hold the gears are just simply pressed into place. I'm not making any comment about the longevity of that, but I would probably rather have a single piece than I would one that has the pins pressed in. These are relatively large gears, and I do worry that these could snap or possibly back out over time. Something to maybe consider, but just kind of an observation that I had. It's rambling conclusion time. Let's um, talk about the Mercury box in terms of pros and cons. And let's start with the cons. Cons, they're huge. Um, these are a lot larger than what I use. Granted, they're really not that big overall, um, but compared to what I'm using, they are massive. These will not fit in Psychotic Break without significant modification. You know, more on that later, but they are pretty, pretty big. Um, the back motor is also a larger diameter as well, so it sticks out just a little bit. Um, they're also a little bit heavier, um, so that is another con. Um, another con that I would give these is the thickness of this outer ring gear here. This is aluminum, and as you saw earlier, it's relatively thin. I don't really want to comment about the longevity because I think, once again, for our purposes, this is going to last for what it needs to do. But I do have concerns about an overhead saw, um, possibly a hammer bot, or any direct impacts onto this middle body. I have no issues with this, a solid steel body taking that hit. I think this is perfectly fine even when I lightened it up a little bit. Um, but these are relatively thin. If I took this whole thing apart, which I don't want to do, you could probably flex that outside sheath a little bit. Um, this is relatively thin to make up for the larger gears. Next, um, I'm saying that the extra amount of power in the motor is maybe a con. I'm probably going to put it in the pros column as well. But 90 watts is maybe a little bit overkill for me. I it's fine. It's an extra few grams, so that is a little bit extra weight that might not be necessary. It's probably more of a supply chain thing, um, but I think having this bigger motor on the back really just isn't all that necessary. I have had no problems pushing people with this little guy. Um, it's plenty powerful enough, and especially if you get the right wheels, the right traction, I have no issues with the amount of power. However, if you're running something with a ton of magnets or you're doing something crazy, the extra power is going to be warranted. Um, other than that, I don't really think that these have any direct cons. It's basically size, weight, and maybe just a little bit overly done for a beetle, unless you have a very, very drive-focused beetle. In terms of pros, I would say the fact that you can have the multiple shaft options, the multiple gear ratio options, and also the multiple KV options, I think that is a really good pro. In terms of cost, these are about the same amount of money. These are about $45 a piece, and this is 28 plus uh, whatever that number was, uh, 19. So these come out to about $47, these are 45, so it's about a wash. Although this SK3 motor is getting harder and harder to find, so that is something else completely. I think the flexibility of them is the best selling point. They do have the big gears. They're probably going to just be more beefy and more um, reliable overall. These are going to be harder to break um, than my little guy. However, if you are in a bot like the type of thing I build where you know, you're saving every last little ounce and you're trying to just squeeze every last little bit of performance out of it, um, this is probably going to still be my preferred setup. But if you're more of a beginner and want something a little bit more bulletproof, I think the Robot Matter um, gear was a Mercury box. Mercury box. I think the Mercury box is a very, very fine gearbox. So overall, I am very pleased to see a lot of off-the-shelf pieces like this existing. Um, when I built these gearboxes a long time ago, you know, getting the pinion able to be fixed on there properly, getting um, the motor attached to here properly, shaving this down so it was the right weight, 
these are kind of a pain. You know, there's a lot of little work that you have to do to get this going. So the fact that there's just something off the shelf that you can buy that has an ESC option that goes directly with it, it's really nice. It's a good day and age for combat robotics to where you can just go out and buy something like this and it is very reasonable quality and it's gonna work for what you need. These are decent. Um, I will look into these if I ever do some more drive focused robots. Um, I have a ton of these. I have a huge bag full of these. So I'll probably keep using these for the time being because I like things that are very small and very lightweight. So this is just kind of more my up my alley and works out for me. But I would highly recommend that people look into these, especially for the big six millimeter shaft. This is going to be a nice beefy shaft if you want to run exposed wheels. So yeah, there you go. Um, check out the links down below for Robot Matter. Um, once again, not affiliated in any way whatsoever. Um, check out that. Check out my Facebook page for any updates to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.